Welcome to This Week in Anime History, where we talk about things that happened this week in anime history. Uh, a couple of things this week. Um, October 22nd, so yesterday, back in 1958, uh, Legend of the White Serpent premiered in Japan, a.k.a. Panda and the Magic Serpent, a.k.a. Legend of the Magic Serpent, a.k.a. Uh, there are so many titles in this movie. Um, but the first full-color animated film in Japan, and um, one of the first big ones for toy animation uh, to sort of get them off the ground and, and, and find big success in a big budget animated film. Uh, one of those movies that, without which we probably would not have a, a big anime industry today because it helped provide a lot of, a lot of jobs for people and got, uh, got folks into the industry, which is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, I don't, John, we've seen that. Steve, have you seen it? Did all three? Yeah, yeah, because we, we all yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't yeah, remember. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one I couldn't find with subtitles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. The whole thing oh, in Japanese. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm a master at Japanese. Exactly, yes. <laughs> and, I, and we discussed it at the time. It's like this yeah. the film is, it's so, it's so done in a particular style that for international release, you didn't have to have it. You could follow the yeah. storyline entirely yeah. just by the way that it's animated. It's like, it's beautifully done. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's very few, like you could not drop somebody in the high school of dead, of the mm. dead. And, <laughs> and be like, what in the hell is happening in this? I story? mean, I disagree with you there. I think high school of the dead is one of the few you probably could because it's like zombies. Well, High schoolers, right? But then their their conversations. You're just that's true. Like, yeah, you're who's, absolutely right. Who's yeah, talking about true. what to? Yeah. But no, Legend of the White Serpent. Mm -hmm. It's like you can tell just by the way that it's it's animated well enough that you get a body read off of them, mm -hmm. so you yeah. can figure out whether it's an intimate yeah. conversation or whether it's just mm -hmm. a, a two people meeting strangers kind of conversation. It's like yep. it worked really well. They obviously mm -hmm. spent a lot of time thinking about this. And <laughs> hallelujah, you know, if it's, this is the hallmark of like. The, the advent of animation. It's like, yay, yeah. we have things to watch today because of things like that. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Yeah. And you're right. I looked up trying to find it. And there's like a list, like half a foot long <laughs> of just all the different names of the call. I'm like, why? Every every time they released it somewhere else, they gave it a new name. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> like, yep. Every, heck? you know. Coming back to theaters, new name. Uh, um, released in Japan, released in Brazil, released in like Taiwan, released in, <laughs> like, yeah. stop renaming it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back before the days when people thought about international releases, when it's like, yeah, make them in Japan, and they, yeah, I mean, it'll, 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 whatever, you, you, yeah, you whatever. it out. Just get the kids in, get the money. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and for what it's worth, um, it also helps. This is based on one of the, I think it's called one of the, one of the four great tales of Chinese uh, fairy tales, basically. Um, right. So there, there, there are four that are considered kind of the classics, and this is one of them. So choosing an iconic tale, I think, also helps. Uh, with yes. that communication. Um, speaking of old anime, um, something that came along a mere five years later, on October 20th, 1963, Tetsujin 28 Go! Mm. Also known over here as Gigantor. Mm. Uh, that premiered back <laughs> in Japan. Um, I have a joke on that, which we'll get to later. Um, uh, the first giant robot series in the sense that it was the first series with a giant robot main character, I'll put it that way. Uh, there were giant robots and other, other shows, but they were kind of side characters. Um, and uh, Gen Gen 28 Go, also interesting for the fact that it was a, in world, a weapon made to defeat the Allies in World War II. So, you know, yeah. not controversial That was a thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it gets, thankfully unmothballed in the grand future year of, I think it was 1980 uh, to to defeat um, crime yeah crime <laughs> and um, the, uh, I, I watched an episode a while back and it was basically uh, it was basically like Cobra it was like this, some terrorist organization <laughs> operating out of some Antarctic base with like these giant tank or these these tanks like remote control tanks that they were you know sending out and so they would come along and destroy all the tanks so that people could go in it was just it was this is clearly made for six-year-old boys, right? Um. <laughs> well, the little bits I've seen of it, it's like when you said, "Oh, this is the first like real, real robot." Mm. Like it didn't have like its own sentience. It didn't have its right. own, you know, yeah. feelings or anything. And it's like, I, and I watched some of it. And I was like, "But it has a face." 
Look yeah, at it does. Like, <laughs> it looks like it should be like, yes, little boy, I'll be able to, to defeat the enemy for you. But like, no, it's just a remote control thing with a with a friendly robot face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, all you need is a little little joystick and two buttons, and it's great. You can control if it worked for Atari, all, all manner of things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, and so that is this week in anime history.